So as always, today's webinar is being recorded and will be available on uh, the webinar site at the Michigan Institute, Michigan Developmental Disabilities Institute at Wayne State on their website. Um, we're using the Zoom webinar platform. And so you will only see the presenters. It's not like when we use the meeting and everyone can see each other, we're using the webinar platform. So your microphones will be muted for the duration of the presentation. Um, and you'll only see the videos of the people that are speaking. Um, we do have closed captioning as always. And to access it, you'll click on the arrow to the right of the closed captioning button and select show subtitles. Uh, today, there are three ways to ask questions. Our presenters do want to take questions throughout the presentation. So you can utilize the Q&A window. You can put questions in the chat box and make sure that you have panelists and attendees selected. And also you can use the hand raise button. To find the hand raise button, you're going to go to the participant list you're going to click the little hand and that'll let us see that you have a question and you can be unmuted and um, you'll be able to ask your question aloud if you would like to. Um, over the last, we have had a couple of uh, Zoom bomb incidents. And so we do take it very seriously and uh, we apologize in advance if there is any interruption of, of our webinar today. Hopefully um, that won't happen, but I just want for people to kind of be prepared and know that uh, people have um, in, in the past have trolled our webinar. I Today we are being joined by Jen Mullins from Michigan Disability Rights Coalition and Dominic Harper who is a dis art social media intern. So he's somewhat of a guru. And so um, I'm gonna turn it over now to our panelists. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Hi there, I'm just gonna load the PowerPoint. All right, welcome to our presentation. Um, this is our social media series part two, using YouTube to stay connected. We wanted to um, make sure we make clear that questions are welcome throughout the presentation today. So please just type them in the chat. Um, we'll be asking you a few questions throughout our time today. So hopefully you'll be able to engage with us and, and we'll, we'll talk a little throughout the presentation. Um, our resource page gives links mentioned during the presentation and that will be in the chat. So you'll just see um, a link that'll say, here's the link to our resource page, you click that and it opens a list of all the links that we talk about today. So if you're interested in learning about something, you'll just be able to open that link and then see all the other information. Um, and again, just don't feel like you have to hold your question until the end. It's okay to type it in the chat. And then I think um, Mary from the DD Council is going to be moderating that and letting us know when there's questions and, and responses and things. So with that, we're gonna do presenter introductions, and Dominic, why don't you start? Hello, my name is Dominic Harper. Um, I'm a LDO fellow, a former fellow, and uh, I work for Disart as an intern for social media management. Uh, I use social media regularly for advocacy and staying connected with regular people and uh, just being involved in the disabled community as a whole. Oh, great. Um, um, sure, did you have know any other questions? Just go ask. Did you want to talk about any of the lessons that you've kind of learned as a DisArt uh, social media intern so far? Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel like people get overwhelmed by social media, and depending on the level of your disability, be it visible or invisible. I have two, I have a visible one and an invisible one. So um, sometimes social media takes me a while to adapt and learn a way for me to adapt and utilize it in a way uh, to be independent 
and to uh, be successful. So it's all about trial and error and don't beat yourself up about it. Everybody's running at the same rate. Some people pick up faster than others, but you'll get there. That's great. Um, and my name is Jen Mullins. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I work for a Michigan Disability Rights Coalition and I work in a couple of different programs, the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. And then this year I'm also working in the Leadership Development Opportunities or LDO program. And I manage the social media for our organization for the most part. Um, this year with the start of the pandemic, our program and the AT program, Assistive Technology, we also started making YouTube videos. And different um, content creators, which we'll get into uh, a little bit into the presentation. Great. We have a question in the form of a hand raise. Are you able to take this at this time? Yes. Okay. Tedra, Leonardo has a hand raise. You'll have to give him the ability to unmute. I am not able to unmute Le Leonardo. His uh, Zoom is not, it's not current. And so Leonardo, if you could type your question in the chat if possible, that or the Q&A box, that would be great. Thank you. So if you guys want to continue, I will let you know if that occurs. Thanks Mary, thanks Leonardo. All right, um, on the slide that we're looking at right now, it says YouTube video topic examples. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what kinds of videos might be on YouTube. You know, maybe you're a seasoned user and you love to use YouTube and use it every day, um, or maybe you're kind of newer to it and you're wondering, why would I use YouTube? So on the screen, there is a, um, there is a guy standing next to a camera holding up a gaming controller and his name is Marquise Bronley. On his channel, MKBHD, and there's a link on the resource page, he talks all about technology and he gives his opinion and feedback about everything from iPhone to PlayStation to the Tesla Cybertruck. Um, he's really knowledgeable while being down to earth and fun. And so he's somebody I really like to tune into on YouTube to learn about different tech that's coming out. Um, he recently did one on all the updates that the iPhone got recently. There are a bunch of accessibility updates and he talked about that. There are other ones that you can watch and there are links on the resource page. You can watch videos related to baking and cooking. There are even ones that kind of, you know, they give you the ingredients ahead of time and then you kind of bake or cook with them um, and you can pause it while you do things. But it's kind of like some, having someone there to help you do that. Uh, we mentioned technology. Um, Marquise is just one example. Advocacy, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Survivalism. This is kind of a trend on YouTube that um, people go into the woods and, and just kind of try to live for a weekend by things that they make. Um, you know, some people will make a shack or a, a furnace. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. So if you're into it, YouTube probably has a, a channel for it. And then there are other makeup tutorials that are really popular. So we have our first question. Dominic, do you want to take this? Yes, um, hold on one second. There where I can read it. Let's see. Question. Are we able to take the question at this time? Yeah. yeah. Um, Bob asks, how does YouTube add do closed captioning? Um, it actually does it really well. For the most part, um, you have the click the C and C button, um, which will be on the corner of a page. Am I, if I'm not mistaken, Jen? So there's, um, with YouTube, and we'll talk more about how to do this, but YouTube will do auto-generated captions for all of its videos. Auto-generated is made by a computer, not by a person. So they're not always accurate, but they are available on all videos. Some creators know that captions are really important to people 
And so they will take the time to manually caption their videos, so captioned by a person. And so if that option is available, when you click the CC button or you turn on captions in your settings, you'll be able to choose, usually if you're speaking English, English or auto-generated English. And so you would pick English if you want something captioned by a person. But if there's no other option, it's just English auto-generated, that's the one you got to go by. Hopefully that's helpful. So we wanted to ask the audience, um, do you use YouTube? How do you use it? What do you like to use it for? Can you type in the chat? And on the screen, there's an image of a person looking at their phone to watch a video as the image for the slide. Um, and I'll just, I'll volunteer some information. I love to use YouTube. I probably use it almost every day. I love to cook and bake. And so I love to watch baking and cooking videos. Um, I learn new things all the time, new techniques that I want to try out in my kitchen. Um, and I mentioned, I like to watch Marquise's channel. Uh, Dominic, how do you use YouTube? Um, I use it a lot with, uh, I, I, I do a lot of game tutorial things because sometimes I get stuck. And uh, I've been fascinated just about, um, I learned about some accessibility settings that are on, available on some new uh, games and systems. I also do a lot of podcast listening on there because it makes, uh, just seeing a conversation sometimes helps. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I also do it for the news, for the snippets, for, this, uh, for the clips of the, some news things because you sometimes digesting a lot of information at once is kind of overwhelming. So, you know, specifically, um, and uh, what else do I, I use it for one more? Oh, uh, I use it as a, like a radio station trying to figure out, you know, new types of music. Um, but mostly entertainment and, and some educational aspects. Um, That's great. Um, have we gotten any comments yet about how people use YouTube? We do. Are you ready for those now? Yes, thank you. Sharon indicates she likes to learn new things using YouTube. Uh, I use YouTube to listen to DJs who have channels and play sets. Um, I'm very new to YouTube, but I'm starting an inclusive Bible study. Hmm. Trying to capture all of these, just a moment. These are great. I love to hear about how people are using it. Well, I'm trying to scroll through these here. I will add my own personal. I have been watching the 1619 uh, project on YouTube, all the different sessions there. Um, I'm not familiar with that, but I'm writing it down so I can check it out. I'm looking for the rest of these in. Hmm. I'm, I'm glad there's okay. a lot of questions, you know, responses. Mary, um, we have some people someone... talking about music, et cetera. Oh. Um, and then again, other people talking about being very new. Mm -hmm. Music info planning, looking new phones before they come out in the news. Uh, use, I use YouTube to help my relationship with my boyfriend and watch Sims 3. Mm. I use it for how to do stuff such as how to braid hair, putting something together, etc. Those are all the responses in the chat box. Thank you. Um, Tedra, and I'd like to ask Tracy if we have, if anyone responded on Facebook. Responded yet. Not yet. Thank you for remembering that. Yes, if, if there are comments on Facebook too, please chime in with those. Thank you. So we're going to go over a few terms. Dominic, would you mind doing this one? Okay. A content creator would be uh, somebody that creates content. So anybody that uh, puts out a video and has the information or something entertaining to give to the uh, user, which would be you or me. Anybody using YouTube? Uh, 
subscriber is a person that subscribes to a channel. So, like, you press the button, and you can always get the updates of your favorite content creators, uh, people that you enjoy their videos. Also, hit that like button. It is uh, the, the thumbs up, which is important. Uh, and then we have trolls, which are people that usually say negative comments and try to get a rise out of the commu YouTube community that watches the creator's videos or the creator them, say, them or they self. That's great. And we'll talk more about trolls um, later on. Um, so next up, we're going to talk about five different disability advocates, uh, advocate, sorry, activists on YouTube. Um, and we're going to play a couple of videos from them, too. So first up, we have Sitting Pretty Lolo. And on the screen is Lolo's um, YouTube banner. Um, he also has some for tags for social media. And this is a link on the resource page as well. So I'm just going to read the text to give an intro about Lolo. She uses her channel, Sitting Pretty Lolo, to talk about her life as a person with a physical disability. The YouTuber lives with ALS um, or, I'm sorry, amotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis, which is a progressive disease impacting nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. Lolo, who uses a wheelchair to get around, covers everything from wheelchair-friendly fashion to dating and sex on her channel. Uh, next up, we have J.D. Aragon. He is, or sorry, they are um, an indigenous Hopi American Indian gay low vision YouTube creator with albinism. These complex and intersecting identities are essential to J.D.'s channel where he promotes self-love and acceptance through honest conversations about identity. And then next up for our next example, we have Jessica Kilgren Fosgard, um, adding a vintage lesbian fabulousness to a life with disabilities and chronic illnesses. Aided by my beautiful wife, Claudia, and our adorable pups, I make fun, uplifting, and educational content that should help you get through tough times and not feel alone. Um, I recently watched a video uh, by Jessica where she talks about how Britney Spears, years and years ago, the pop star Britney Spears, had um, you know some a mental health issue. Um, she she has a mental health um, uh, things going on, but she had some you know like an incident, and she was assigned a guardian by a, by a judge, but she hasn't been able to get out of that guardianship. And I think, you know, like a lot of people with disabilities with a guardian, maybe you don't want a guardian, but you have one and what do you do? And it maybe doesn't seem very fair. And so this is a big disability social justice issue. And Jessica talks about it in detail in, in her video. Um, the link to that video is on our resource page. Um, I really like the take that she has on guardianship in her video. It's a way of talking about it that I've never heard about it before and it feels very relevant um, and less, uh, you know, it's important. If you if you like pop music, you usually know who Britney Spears is and it just feels really relatable. Uh, and the next up we have a YouTube YouTuber or content creator named Annie Elaney. So my name is Annie. I am chronically ill, disabled, queer, Latinx, woman of color. On this channel, I create weekly videos as long as my health allows, on various topics that include my observations and experiences with body image, gender, race, LGBT, disability, chronic illness, and mental health. And next up, we are going to watch a video um, by Annie. I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna hit play. I think that the captions should show up. Hello, hello. And this is a good example. I can show you where the captions are. So in Annie's video, there's a little CC. I'm oh, sorry, this is moving around a little bit. Bear with me. There's a little CC button down here and it says closed captions. So if I click that, it turns it on. And if I go into settings, let's see, is it on here? Subtitles, I can look and see, I can do English. 
or I can do English auto-generated, okay? We were talking a little bit about this before. So I want English because I know that Annie has captioned this herself and it's gonna be captioned by a person. So it's just gonna be um, more accurate. It's gonna be easier for me to understand versus English auto-generated down at the bottom here, which is captioned by a machine and not as, um, not as accurate. Something I really like that the DD Council does for these webinar series, they use a live captioner um, to caption their sessions because they know it's more accurate and more accessible for people. Let's see. So English, I have my CC on and I'm gonna hit play. Hello, hello. In case you missed it, ambulatory wheelchair users exist. An ambulatory wheelchair user, sometimes called a part-time wheelchair user, is a wheelchair user with a limited ability to walk or run, or dance, or climb, among so many other possible things. As an ambulatory wheelchair user myself, I'm often asked, why would you use a wheelchair if you can walk? The fact is, wheelchairs are not just for people with no mobility in their legs. Wheelchairs are mobility aids for a variety of different disabilities. People may need to use a wheelchair, whether manual or electric, due to chronic pain, um, fainting spells, lack of stability, dizziness, chronic fatigue, muscle joint or skin fragility. Some people have occasional periods of paralysis. They might have lung or heart conditions, um, and the list goes on. Wheelchairs can also be used preventatively to prevent flare-ups or worsening symptoms. A wheelchair user's abilities and limitations can vary greatly as well. Uh, there can be time limitations, distance limitations, speed limitations. Um, it can depend on the type of activity. Like, uh, for example, some people may not have a problem at all walking, but cannot stand still without triggering their symptoms and some people vice versa. That being said, being able to walk without a mobility aid does not equate to being able-bodied. A personal example would be um, if I needed to go out and didn't have my wheelchair, I would still need to park in the disabled parking space because maybe I can make it the 15 steps into a location and have a seat right away but I wouldn't be able to make it any further than that. My disability is a figurative timer on my legs. So just because I may be able to walk a few feet into a location does not mean that I'm not disabled. This misconception and lack of awareness for ambulatory wheelchair users largely comes from media representation and harmful tropes like the fake disability trope. You know the one. You've seen it numerous times where a wheelchair user gets out of a chair to reveal they were faking it all along. But how many times in media have you seen a wheelchair user get out of their wheelchair and it be treated as a casual thing? I promise you, not nearly as many times. As rare as it is to see a disabled character in media, we see even less of the diversity of the disability community, and that is severely needed. You can be an ally to ambulatory wheelchair users by confronting the falsehood when seen and rejecting stereotypical and harmful tropes. If you see someone accusing or harassing someone for faking their disability because they got out of a wheelchair, don't be a bystander. Ask them if they need help. But most of all, don't be that person. Don't harass disabled people just because you think they might be faking. You are very likely to be wrong. There's so much that the average person doesn't know about disability and you risk harassing and traumatizing the very people that you claim to be protective of. Thank you so much for listening. If you appreciated this video, please consider becoming a Patreon Patreon and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you eventually. Bye. All right. So um, 
That was Annie's video. And Dominic, I think you were going to take us through some discussion. Um, I enjoyed that video the first time I seen it because it helped me confront some of my biases, even though I have a physical disability. It's sometimes hard for me to step out of my box, and sometimes watching a video like that puts things in better perspective. Even as an advocate, we're always learning and, and you know, growing as a person. <laughs> and uh, I think it's good when, when a conversation can start from a video like that. And her delivery was um, really well done. And the way she edited clips to kind of push her point to visual aids, even captioning to make it, uh, she made smooth captioning for uh, people that need to cap close caption. So what do you guys, what do you, what do you guys' thoughts on that, um, the video? Just wondering if you have any um, comments in the chat. Did anybody type what they thought of Annie's video? Not at this time. Okay. Tracy, anything from Facebook Live? Um, not at this time. Okay. Um, well, thanks. That's so. That's one example of um, one activist on YouTube. And the next, we're going to go into. Somebody Dominic really likes, and I like too. So go ahead, take it away, Dominic. Um, we had a late comment that they thought it was really good. Oh, great. Thanks, Blake. Um, I like Zach. Um, can't never pronounce his name. Anner. Uh, Anner. Zach Anner a lot. Uh, for me, my experience with him was back in like 2005. Um when he was doing a show for Oprah and he got money to do a travel show that was on the travel channel for a little while where him and his friends would travel the world and he had uh, cerebral, he had cerebral palsy, so it was very relatable for me and where I was at in my life at the time as a teenager. And he's gone on to do great things in YouTube and, and with the United Cerebral Palsy. And also, he was one of the writers on Craters and Writers on Speechless, which was a great show for its uh, time. So, big fan. Yeah. And so we thought we would show, Dominic brought this up. Um, do you want to talk about the video we're going to watch, Dominic? Oh, it's a great video. It's called The, was it the Journey. The, out for the Rainbow Bagel, uh, he traveled to New York with the sponsorship behind United Cerebral Palsy to kind of see if he could get into uh, this bagel place that served this uh, social media buzzed uh, or trending thing that was called the Rainbow Bagel. And uh, it was a good thing about, it was a good video that showed inclusion or the lack of inclusion in one of the biggest cities in the world um, that I found interesting. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a great example of how uh, advocacy could be done in a humorous and uh, uh, um, amazing way in video. Awesome, I, I agree. I'm gonna get it, I couldn't, oops, I couldn't, uh, what's it called? Uh, embedded in the PowerPoint, so I have to open up a new window. So bear with me real quick. While you're doing that, Jen, we have one more comment in the chat box. Sharon writes regarding the previous video that she gave great information on people that use wheelchairs. Oh, that's great. Good question, Sharon. I agree. I feel like we don't often hear that in the media as, as well. We don't hear about this topic. Um, and I think people kind of get ridiculed for not using their chair all the time, which is nobody's business. And yeah, but thanks for your, um, thanks for your thoughts. So this is within YouTube, like the YouTube browser. And I just wanted to show again, when I go to my settings and I go to subtitles, there is English auto generated. Um, but 
the way that the United Cerebral Palsy has made this video, they actually put captions in the video. So for now, I'm going to keep this off because it's actually in the video. I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to hit uh, play. Uh, how's it going? Today we're just like, we'll do something real simple, like go and get a bagel. We've been waiting to go downstairs for about 25 minutes now. All of the elevators that have come by have been full. You know, there's other elevators in this hotel, but we can't get to them because there's stairs to the elevator. Hi! Uh, I think maybe we should improvise, guys. Here we go. Can we make it in this one? Hi. Hi. Okay. It only took an hour to get from my room to downstairs. How can I help you today? This film crew wants to send me on a solo New York adventure to get New York bagels. You can get bagels anywhere. I the know. They've come up with the idea that it's best to go to Brooklyn to, oh, a, to, Brooklyn. A, to a place. Bagels? Yeah. They want the rainbow bagel oh, in Brooklyn. Rainbow bagel. Wow, that looks pretty, though. That is a pretty bagel, I must <laughs> say. Take the East Subway okay. right to Metropolitan Avenue. And they got good bagels there, my man. Look at All that. Right. All right. Rainbow bagels, I'll baby. let you know how it is and if oh, it's it worth the Hey, track. could you bring me one back? I will bring you one back. Thanks, yes, buddy. I will. I how long that. are you working, Judd? I'll be here until 3. Well, you going to be back before I leave? Well, I can try. We have less than five hours to go get a bagel, so let's go catch a train. Bagel Crest! Bagel Crest! See, I thought she'd be bigger, honestly, but I'm glad I saw it while I was here. Oh, I think I found it, and I scared a baby. It says Subway. There's stairs. Oh, you got a map? Awesome. Perhaps it might be across the street. Oh, thank you so, so much. Okay, just hit it with some speed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I, I get it! New York! The city that never stops f***ing with you. What? There's f***ing more steps! If I don't find this entrance, I'm giving up on life and bagels. I see an M! There's a little wheelchair underneath the M! ta -da! An elevator. So let's go. We're taking the A train. No one else is as excited. What are we gonna do? We have to take a boat. A boat? There's no accessible train. We have to take the Bagel Ferry. All in all, a pretty fun, efficient day. Bagel! I'm gonna just assume that nothing will go wrong and we'll happily get our gaggle of bagels. <laughs> Whoa! There's a man named Judd waiting for me in Manhattan. So it's 1.15, we've got exactly one hour and 45 minutes to go and get Judd's bagel and coffee, and if we don't get it, then he's gonna be starving back at the hotel. So we've gotta find out where this place is. Do you know where Rainbow Bagel is? Oh, no. Do you know where Rainbow Bagel is, sir? Do you know where Rainbow Bagel is? <laughs> what the? Look at how hip that guy is. I, I love fair trade coffee. Isn't Whole Foods the greatest? You know where Rainbow Bagel is? What? Brooklyn has not accepted me, and this is my best outfit. Bunch of ableist hipsters, I think. That's a nice hat, though, sir. 
Bagel store, the world's best bagels. That must be the one. 754 Metropolitan. When you go that way, you make a left. Those bagels are gonna taste so good. What the f It's not accessible. Let's go home. Hey, good afternoon, boss. How you Hello. doing? Hello. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I can help you today. I need a rainbow bagel. Anything else? Um. No, just the ramp. New York City is actually one of the most accessible cities in the country, and they still have a long way to go. So in order to make sure that happens, you gotta donate to places like the Cerebral Palsy Foundation and keep having the important conversations to make sure people like me can get access to whatever color bagels they want. I may have struggled getting this bagel today, but I didn't get this for me. I got this for my friend Judd. And friendship is what's really important. Oh, sh! I just took a bite of Judd's bagel. Ah, I barely, barely knew the guy. Who cares? <laughs> All right, that was the rainbow bagel. And man, that uh, that gets me every time. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it while I get reset up, um, Dominic? Yeah, um, it's kind of rem reminiscent of my experience when I went to the disability uh, a policy summit in D.C. And D.C. is very accessible, but there were some places that I just couldn't get in. And it was uh, an adventure for me and my friend that was with me. And so... Um, it's always fun doing things, even though it might be at times uh, a little tiresome. Mm -hmm. I think it's still needed to show that, you know, things are good, but they can be better. I can't believe he had to take a ferry. There were no accessible subway stops, so he had to take a boat across the water to get to the bagel store. Ah, we I have mean, a couple comments in chat. Oh, great. Thank you. Sharon replies that that was funny. Um, I'll add my own comment that I took a group of people, 30 some people with disabilities to New York once. Too many adventures, too numerous to talk about, but yes, indeed, there are times you'd have to literally take a ferry to get from one place to another. Um, Leo had a question and he has his hand raised. I don't see your question in the chat or Q&A, Leo. Tedra, do you want to unmute? Yes, Leo should be able to ask his question now. Go ahead, Leo. Hello, can you guys see me? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I just had to leave the, the chat for a minute because I had to update my... It's Leo. <laughs> um, Leo, if you're talking right now, we can't hear you. Just letting you know. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, I was just saying that I I watched the the YouTubers that you guys played on the videos. And I'm also a YouTuber my, myself. I have my own YouTube channel. Oh, great. Yeah. And I know Dominic, too. We know each other. Hey, Dominic. How you doing, buddy? Um, Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Just trying to okay. get this presentation. But it's good to see you. Thanks for Good being to see you, here. too. And then um, we'll come thank back you, to you, Leo. Okay, thank you. We have a couple more questions in the chat, and then we'll go to Facebook Live. 
Lauren writes, sometimes there's a struggle in life to go somewhere. Yep. And we have, we've come a long way, baby. Yeah. yeah. Mary, that says we have not come a long way. Oh, dyslexia strikes again. Sorry, I missed that word. <laughs> we've not come a long way, baby. We have not come a long way, baby. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the correction, Tedra. It was an important point to make with that comment. Okay, let me get that to the next one here. It was an excellent video. My question is, what is a good software to edit videos on Create One? That is a great question. YouTube has, has come a long way, thankfully, in the past couple of years, and they actually have built in Creator Studio that lets you edit um, your video yourself using their website. And so I would recommend using the YouTube software. Um, otherwise, then you're kind of looking in the uh, Adobe programs and the Adobe programs are really expensive, but they are an option. Yeah, and it takes a while to get, get the hang of Adobe. There's a lot more of, uh, if you have visual or any type of um, overstimulation, uh, Adobe, um, has a lot going on, um, but also YouTube has tutorials how to use Adobe on uh, on uh, their channel. So you know, step by step practicing, and you know, um, you'll get there. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Um, one that also came up as I was talking about it, or as we were answering, sorry. Um, there's a newer program and it's called Canva, C-A-N-V-A, and it is a website um, and they're making changes all the time, but you can edit videos on that site now. Um, in order to access the, re the higher resolution you need, you have to pay for it, but I think it's um, a couple of dollars a month for a subscription. So that's also an option, Canva. Okay, Tedris put that in the chat. And then we have one other comment from the chat before we go to Facebook. Um, they write, that would be a difficult journey in bad weather. Oh, yeah, can you imagine all the snow? I, I don't know if you want to talk about that, Dominic. Trying oh to man, snow is, snow is my arch nemesis. If I was a superhero, snow would be the thing that uh, slows me down the most. Uh, um, but I think I think it's also a good point to say that we have to show determination to be seen out in public is just a part of, you know, advocacy and a part of making people aware of, of our everyday activities, you know, uh, physical disability, minor disabilities, it, it, um, you know, not to say minor, but invisible disabilities. Um, and whatnot, you need to be you need to be seen in the community. So it's a yeah. give and take. Definitely a difficult journey to make. If if, if that's what you uh, want to do, you know, more power to you and you know, all the positive energy. Mm -hmm. We have one more comment in the chat. Uh, Paula writes that Canva Pro is free to nonprofits. Great. Yes, that's awesome. Tracy, anything from Facebook? Um, th no, there's no comments or questions. Okay. Okay, that covers everything. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Tracy. So next up, Dominic, you're going to lead us in a little uh, discussion. Um, and this may have picked up a little bit on Leo, who mentioned he already has a channel. Um, so we wanted to ask if you were to create a YouTube channel and videos, what would you focus on? Um, if you already have a channel, what topics do your videos focus on? Uh, yeah, for, for me personally, I work with a few friends to do, um, it's not really disability focused, it's more hobby focused, uh, uh, video game reviews and uh, daily living. Um, for me and my friends, we talk about, you know, what we watch on TV. Sometimes I talk about the day-to-day the -day, um, struggles or instances that might happen with me having support uh, care staff and 
navigating a social life in my late 20s, early 30s, and trying to navigate disability and whatnot. Um, there's this, there's a space for everybody. There's a, you know, everybody has a voice and the, the internet makes it easy. Social media makes it easier to you can share your story and your voice, regardless of age, race, gender, uh, physical limitations, um, learning limitations. Um, I think, I think when you can use it, use it for good, it's a, it's a good platform. You know. Yeah, and Dominic, I think you make a great point. Um, I think as people with disabilities, it's not necessarily our responsibility to educate the public about access issues or things that we would like them to tune in. But if you feel driven to do that, you can. You can also just create videos of, about things that you're interested in as well. like. You know, if I were to do a baking thing, maybe I'd share about some assistive technology devices I use, but it would probably be focused on baking. And it's just one of my um, identities that I am a baker. Um, yeah, you don't have to put yourself up front either too. You can you can just enjoy enjoy yourself. Yeah. Um, it's definitely interesting to see people with disabilities make just basic content and interject assistive technology or techniques they learn to get around certain challenges, which is amazing. Or when they use humor. Humor is my favorite thing to use um, <laughs> for most of my videos. I kind of try to find the humor in situations because it's the most human connecting it's, you know, thing. In, in my mind, it's one of the most human things to connect with people. So ways to connect with people. Yeah. That's a great point too. Um, I feel like I really connected to Zach because instead of just getting angry, he kind of used a lot of sarcasm and you know helped you realize how or helped me realize how ridiculous things were um, accessibility wise. Well, yeah, it's it's weird to see people not want to even answer where can you find a bagel, and then I thought about it, and sometimes it depends on the personality or a person, but he did get help, and I thought that was interesting that he, he started talking about that he probably wasn't hip enough, which is a very, you know, if you've been to a, a, a metropolitan city, kind of like New York, the hipper you are, you you might get talked to, and it might not always be a disability thing. Yeah. It's a strange road we live in sometimes, but it's, it's a good thing to represent uh, representation of the journey we all go through or have gone through or maybe gain perspective if you've never experienced that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. We do have one comment in the chat box. Um, somebody's making a recommendation for Filmora app and their computer software. Can you say what uh, software again? Filmora, F-I-L-M-O-R-A. Thank you. I'm writing that down so I can check it out too. <laughs> Love to learn. So I'm, I'm sure there's a YouTube video that talks about Filmora too and how to use it. I, I used to use a uh, DJ in, uh, software so I had to watch um, a youtuber how to how to use it and uh, it was very beneficial I've also seen people fix their cars <laughs> in their wheelchairs from a YouTube tutorial uh, uh, yeah just to interject like my uh, my husband he got a truck but it didn't have uh, like the things that you step on to get into the truck and so he watched a YouTube video and he was able to install them himself. So um, he felt he felt comfortable doing that. It may work for some people and not everybody, and that's okay too. Yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Well, if, um, if you're kind of still mulling this over and you feel like, I don't know, maybe I'd like to do a YouTube channel one day, but I'm not sure. Um, as long as your wheels are kind of turning, you know, 
I, me, Jen, I'd love to tune into your YouTube channel. So um, you already have one potential audience person um, and I would subscribe and watch your videos. Um, but in order for you to be active on YouTube, you don't just have to make videos. There are other ways to participate. Do you want to go through some of those, Dominic? Okay, I, I'm glad. I'll be gladly. I'm gladly go through them. Um, glad to. Um, be a subscriber, which is very important, especially because of the way um, YouTube now has a revenue stream for creators that make content. Um, subscriptions are important. Uh, Comments, clicking the thumbs up button to like it. One will keep it in your history. So if you ever want to reference it or go back to it, uh, give it that thumbs up, you know. Uh, also, um, commenting uh, will, and sharing uh, and, and sharing the videos to spread the word. Uh, it's kind of like free, promo free promotion. Uh, so... Spread and you know share the message that you feel that is important with you, with your friends, on uh, your Facebooks, Twitters, Instagrams, any other social media platform that you use. You can text it to people. I don't know how many times in a day when I'm with my friends that somebody shares a YouTube video or something that they found on YouTube, or even when we get together as a group. We'll put on a YouTube video that we thought was hilarious or, you know, a friend you get to know about. And that's how we commune around um, with each other. Yeah. So, Dominic, I, I wrote down something you said that I thought was awesome. Um, regarding comments, you said comments are for the introverts. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh yeah, comments are definitely for the introverts. Thank you for bringing that back up. Um, comments too, for people that don't feel that they need to have the um, confidence right now or it's just not your style to be a content creator with videos, but you wanna be a part of a community, comments are definitely for the introverts. Like for people that don't necessarily wanna be seen, but you can be heard and some of us have a better time of writing down our thoughts and giving positive feedback. It's a good way to be part of the community. And as a, as a former content creator myself, comments are helpful because you can become a better um, producer of content uh, from audio, from vi video, from closed captioning, you know, Maybe they need to work on the closed captioning or their image descriptions or what have you with the video. Um, I think it's important. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Dominic. I think like if somebody leaves you a positive comment, like, thanks, that was helpful. Um, as a content creator myself, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm going to make another video or I want to ask them, you know, what was helpful or what are you interested in? Um, because I want to know what, what's important to people. And it feels really motivating when I get comments from people. Um, I recently did a video on these little silicone mask inserts that you can put inside of your mask and it kind of holds the mask away from your face. So it doesn't just go in your mouth. I don't know if that happens to people. You breathe and then your face mask kind of goes into your mouth. And um, I don't know, it's a yucky sensory thing for me. It kind of makes me feel like I'm drowning. But if I can just put this silicone insert in, it holds it away from my mouth. And I made a little video to show people that and tell them about it. Um, and people have said, you know, I, I didn't know about this. I'm going to use it. Or I didn't, you know, this could be really helpful when I'm talking. And when I see those comments, it just makes me think, oh, this is great. You know, I, I shared about something that I really find um, helpful. Maybe I want to share about something else so they can be super motivating. You can let people know they're on the right track. Definitely. Cool. Do we have any other comments, Mary or uh, Tracy? Uh, one other comment from the chat, just that the participant likes to watch documentaries on YouTube. Oh, that okay. is also a good one. And I'll just add that I was watching on YouTube a short video on mask with a clear 
um, opening around the mouth for people who were signing. So that was helpful. Anything from Facebook Live, Tracy? Um, nope, not at this time. Okay, that's all we have for now. Thank you. So we're gonna move into um, making YouTube videos. So if you're interested, um, I put together some lessons I've learned or some information I've learned while making videos. Dominic, as a former content creator, please feel free to jump in. Um, and on the screen in front of you is just a person looking at their laptop watching a YouTube video and they have a bunch of plants in the background. Um, so when you're thinking about what you would want to do for your video, I think it's really important to plan it. Um, I'm somebody who loves to improv what she's going to say, but I think for a video, you want to make sure that you have a plan. Otherwise, maybe you get nervous and you forget what you're going to say, or um, maybe you get off track. Um, so you're going to really try to pick three or four main points. You could even pick one point and that's okay. Um, just not, you know, 10 or 20, because that might be a little harder to follow. Um, and if you have more content than a few points to cover, maybe create additional videos. It's helpful to keep your videos around five or six minutes. Shorter videos tend to have more viewers who will watch the whole thing. You know, both with Annie Eleni and Zach's video, uh, they were both shorter. I think they were both six minutes or under and they were able to get their points across. Yeah, um, me and my friends are guilty of doing like an hour and 30 minutes of uh, just conversations, but we find that people listen to about the 20 minute mark of that, depending on who you are. Um, but shorter videos, definitely a better thumbnail, visual thumbnail would be great um, to get catch people's attention to click the video, um, what they would call clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, I think too, it's important to, you know, if you don't want to have a script, at least maybe write out the points that you're going to talk about. Um, you know, you would think that it's fine, but once you get behind a camera and you start realizing, oh my gosh, I'm recording this video and I'm going to share it with people and it's going to be out there for the world to see, you might get really nervous. So help, it's helpful to have um, something written down of what you want to focus on to kind of help center yourself if you find that helpful. Um, avoid using acronyms because people aren't gonna know what they are. Be clear in what you say. Don't, don't worry about those figures of speech or, I don't know. I think sometimes too, they can, you can feel hip when you say them, so don't worry about being hip. Um, and then describe visual components in your video for those who are blind or have low vision to provide context. And so if I were to just kind of hold up something and not say what it is, I, right now I'm holding up this pink post-it note that I've been writing notes on throughout the presentation so I can go check things out. Um, if I just hold it up and I keep talking, if somebody's blind or has low vision or a processing disability, they may not know why I'm holding it up or they may not know that I am holding it up. So it's good to explain what you're holding and what it looks like. Um, and on the resource page, we have a few different links that can help you get started with making your own YouTube channel. So definitely check out our resource page if you're interested in that. So I think once you kind of plan out your video, you want to think about setting up your technology that you need. So figure out what you'll need. You'll need some kind of recording device, right? You can use a smartphone. Um, you can use the webcam on your computer. You can use a tablet uh, camera. Usually you want to use the best camera that you have. Um, and a lot of times the camera on your computer, if you use a, uh, if you use a laptop or a tower, it's not really going to be the best camera. Usually the best camera that you have is the one on your phone or your tablet. And then as a friendly reminder, when you're recording, position your camera to record in landscape, so horizontal, rather than in portrait view, because just the way that um, things are set up, you're gonna see things uh, better if it's horizontal. You're gonna see the whole uh, picture better it's not gonna have blank space on both sides like it would if you were gonna do portrait. Um, <clears throat> and then I think for me, it's really helpful to have a tripod device. So on the top corner here, there is an iPhone and then it's being held by this tripod. And this tripod has three flexible legs. And so I can move it uh, up or down or around 
um, but it holds the camera or phone for me while I'm recording. I really like to have a microphone. Um, I think I mentioned that I have a hearing disability. When people use microphones and videos, it makes me so happy. I can understand what they're saying. The sound is so much less echoey and it just comes out a lot more crisp. And honestly, they're not, um, you know, you don't have to be a professional to use a microphone. I have one that I just plug into my iPhone and I wear it clipped on my lapel if I'm making a video or my scarf or shirt. Uh, and, and it just, it works really well. So I really encourage you to get a microphone if that's possible for you. And then um, the tripod that I purchased, which is a link on the resource page, that's just one example. I'm not promoting any business over another, but it came with a little Bluetooth remote clicker. And so rather than having to hit my phone to hit record, I just hit the little clicker in my hand and it's helpful. So that might be an option. So once you have your tech, you're gonna think about setting up your space. Um, videos that are really dark are hard to see, right? You may not be able to see the person or see what they're talking about. So I recommend recording, if you're not gonna buy studio lights and that sort of thing, if you're doing this kind of on the cheap like I am, pick a room in your house or where you live that is by a sunny window. So you're gonna face the window, the sunlight is gonna shine on you. You can have some lamps in the background as well if you want to, but then you're gonna be well lit and people are gonna be able to see what you're doing. You're gonna to try to create a quiet environment for recording and record in rooms that don't typically have an echo. Um, this is hard because if you're doing like a baking or cooking video, you're gonna to wanna to be in your kitchen. And I think that you can decrease that echo a lot by using a microphone. Um, and you wanna, I would say, do a couple of different test videos to get comfortable with the angle and height of the recording device, um, how you sound, you just do a couple of different tests to make sure it um, it is how you want it to be. Because really, if you start doing a video, you get through the whole thing and then you realize, oh, I can see this weird thing in the background that I wish wasn't there. You're gonna have to do the whole thing all over again, right? So just maybe do a couple of different tests to, to see. Um, and then, <clears throat> When you upload your video, if you're uploading it to YouTube, you want to think of a short informative title about your video. You want to hopefully try to think of something that is going to uh, be eye catching or make people interested in what you're talking about. And then you also get to summarize what your video is about in the description box when you upload it to YouTube. So just be thinking about it. You know, if I were to want to, to want to watch a video on this, what would catch my eye or what would make me interested in watching it? Um, I'm going to try to try to say that. And all this information, there's additional resources on our resource page. So we talked a little bit about editing your video. And on the resource page, there are lots of links for editing your video. Um, but one of the things to edit your video is to caption it. And we talked about how YouTube will auto generate captions, but they're by a computer. Um, they're not very accurate, really captioning by a person yourself or someone you pay or someone who helps you out in your life is going to be much more accurate. So in the YouTube studio, you'll be able to edit captions. You don't have to buy another software. It's just a part of YouTube on their website or in their app. Um, YouTube's Creator Academy has a ton of searchable videos, um, you know, such as editing your videos and adding clips and music. If you think back to Annie Eleni's video, she had a bunch of different um, clips from other videos where people were using their chairs or, um, you know, getting out of their chairs. And she uh, used something to be able to edit her video. And you can use the software in YouTube. I know I'm talking a lot. Were, th were there any questions or thoughts that anybody had? Or Dominic, did you want to add anything? Um, I was just seeing that there was a lot of... Uh communication amongst the people that I'm happy to see uh, in, the, in the chat. <laughs> so a lot of networking, which is also good for social media and advocacy. Um, I think you hit all the points on now on the head. As they say, um, I feel personally, when I get behind the camera, I get a little nervous. Uh, I did a television production for uh, school and I never wanted to be behind the camera um, as much 
because I would always seem to stutter. So if you practice um, making a video and you can always re-edit and start over, everything is, um, is redoable when you make a video. So definitely take Jen's advice and uh, take a couple test videos. Check your mic settings. Please check your mic settings. You don't want to come in hot one minute and low the next, so make sure it's at a steady, uh, consistent rate. Thanks, Dominic. Okay, in the chat box, we have asked people if they have a YouTube channel to post that. So if you're interested in seeing any of the other participants' YouTube channel, check the chat. We do have one recommendation for a uh, YouTube video, which is the history of the Situation Room in the White House. And I'm scrolling through the rest of the chat. People are starting to post their YouTube channels. And resources. Uh, Sharon asked, can we get copies of this info? What's the resource link? So we put that in the chat. Great. Um, and a recording of the webinar presentation and resource page will be available early next week at dd.wayne, which is w-a-y-n-e dot e-d-u forward slash m-d-d-c. And that link is also uh, reposted in the chat. That's all we have from chat box and Q&A. Tracy, anything from Facebook Live? Um, no, there are no comments or questions. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you. Um, as a, as a, um, as a, what is it called? A speaker? I really can't see the chat and I was just wondering if it's not an inconvenience, if it maybe if DD Council staff could like copy all the channels, because um, I would really like to check them out. Uh, or if you could send me like a copy of the chat after the presentation, I really want to see, um, I want to check out everybody's channel. So that would be helpful. Will do. Thank you. And make sure that um, you and uh, Dominic put your, oh, you don't have the chat. I'll get yours so we can share those two your channel. Okay. Thanks. Um, my, our channels for MDRC are on the resource page. They're at the end, um, but the link to our YouTube is on there. And then for Dominic, the link to Disart is at the top of the page. But Dominic, if you have other things to share, maybe you, you can see the chat and post in there. I, I will. I, I have a few things for people that want uh, gaming and whatnot. I can, I can share a few things I'm working on with people. Um, but definitely check out this art if you want to see um, artists that are disabled and some advocacy stuff. Um, just a well-rounded community full of uh, more content is going to be created as um, we're still starting up to figure out how we're using the platform better. Thank you. Um, I have a little bit of a soapbox in that I really think captions are helpful. Um, I think not auto-generated captions, but captions by people are extremely helpful. Um, and I just wanted to go through this quickly. Uh, viewers who know English as a second language benefit from closed captions or captioning because they make it easier to follow along with speech. Closed captions or captions help with comprehension of dialogue that is spoken very quickly people who have accents, mumbling, or background noise. Videos that mention full names, brand names, or technical terminology provides clarity for the viewer. Um, and Dominic, I think you mentioned like many people are using captions now. Like, did you say like we all watch uh, Netflix with captions on before? Oh yeah, during our discussion, yeah. We, I was saying that you go over anybody's house, we watch Netflix with captions. And for me, um, it was quite distracting because I wasn't used to it at first. Um, but I watched a lot of things with subtitles anyway, so it helped with my reading comprehension speed-wise. And so I think it's very helpful um, for a multitude of reasons. 
and it's pretty common in today's society to watch with captions. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be watching TV at home and I'll have like the volume up, but I'll think, why can't I hear this very well? I just, I don't feel like I'm understanding. And then I'll realize, oh, I don't have my captions on. And so it's almost like when I turn the captions on, it feels like I can hear better because I can actually see the words that are being spoken. Um, it just it really helps my comprehension. And then just a couple other points. Captions can help maintain concentration, which can provide better experience for viewers with learning disabilities, attention deficits, or autism. Online videos with, with subtitles or captions enjoy higher use, sorry, higher user engagement and better user experience. So people may watch your video for longer if you have good, um, you know, accurate captions. And then captions allow viewers to watch videos in sound sensitive environments like offices or libraries or other shared spaces. Even, I don't know if, if you live in a home with a lot of people, maybe, you, maybe you're trying to be considerate of others and not play the sound too loud. And maybe you have your captions on and, and you don't hear the sound because that way you can still kind of see what people are saying. All right, so that was my, thanks for, thanks for letting me talk about captions. Um, Dominic, I think you were going to talk about sharing your video. Yeah, um, so when you upload your video to YouTube um, or any other uh, video sharing platform, but specifically YouTube is the easiest, um, you, you have to, one, make a description that can make uh, the viewer click it. <laughs> Um, so something that's going to grab the attention of, um, the audience or the audience you're trying to, um, engage with. Uh, another way is share it on your, uh, like I said before, share it on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitters, any other platform you use. You can even text it to people in a text message. Um, can you hear me? Yes. You're doing um, so um, also it's really good to include um, when you share sometimes what a video is about because people seem to read the top half of a post that you posted on your social media so they might want like a general summary of what the, even though it says it in the uh, video tag clip um, description mm -hmm. um so do that as well um and please engage when you when you when you share videos please try to engage in the like and the comments to help the creator or the community grow bigger and make better content yeah um definitely uh and then i we, like along with sharing Maybe you make a video that is about accessibility or something that you think your legislator or different policymakers in your community may want to know about. So if you're finding that your community is not very, um, maybe the curbs are terrible and they really need to fix the roads. Um, I live in Ypsilanti. Uh, it's not, not too far from Ann Arbor. Um, one part of our township, our roads are just terrible. And so well, if... I live, I live there too. And... I can say that I want to make a video about gaining access to, to different parts because one half of the city is very accessible. The other half of the city, depending on where you're at, is a little less accessible. Sorry to cut you off, but it's very funny that you said that because um, before Corona, I was going to walk, go around with a camera a GoPro and see if I can uh, uh, go into certain businesses and give people a uh, sit down perspective of a, of a wheelchair user trying to get around their community. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would have been super powerful. And if you, if you want to do that, I hope you, do, I hope you do that. Um, I, I think it's different when you hear, you know, our roads are so bad versus seeing a video of like, where the bus stop is and like how broken up the pavement is that you really can't use a chair mm -hmm. to like travel on it. Um, you know, they say a picture says a thousand words. How many does a video say? 
Um, but that, that could be something that you tag your city clerk in, or you, um, you maybe you message them and say, I'm a, I'm a voter in Ypsilanti Township, or I'm a voter in your district. And uh, this is really something that I need you to, um, to deal with, or I need you to share this with city council. This is a problem that needs to be fixed. I think they did that. I think they did that around uh, the winter time last winter. I, I know that the potholes in Michigan are horrible and we say that, but I know that a lot of news outlets started filming what the potholes actually look like and how gigantic they are and how much they fill with water and what else. Um, and they started kind of sharing this information in news feeds and on social media. And I think it got like national coverage because our potholes in Michigan are so horrible. Um, so, so share your videos and think about not just with your friends, but who can make a difference about this issue that I'm sharing about um, and, and try to uh, help that person see your video and watch it. All right. So Dominic, did you want to take this one? Is, uh, okay, so is YouTube appropriate for everybody? Um, give me one second, I'm reading. Takes me a minute. Oh, sure. So, I just um, go ahead. For the most part, YouTube is a secure place. Uh, they've gotten better with their um, algorithm to get negative content um, or um, trolls that are very, you know, harming to certain communities out of. But you're still gonna face those issues when you're using social media regardless of how good a uh, program um, can detect certain uh, things, aspects. I feel like for YouTube, there is a safety tool um, for age restriction content, which is always good because it seems to be that my nieces and nephews, being as young as they are, know how to navigate YouTube better than me. Um, so definitely age restriction. Parental controls are good. Um, but also, um, just be mindful when you create things. Don't give out too much personal information to, of your location. Um, and have a friend or a person that you can trust. Double check if you have um, some issues with this is this too much information? Is this not enough information? Because we all have, you know, as advocates and as people with disabilities, I sometimes feel like we're very open people. Sometimes depending on how we're trying to come across. So I feel like um, it's a level of comfortability and it's also a level of just being cautious of not everybody has great intentions um, when it comes to you putting out content, you have great intentions, you think it's important, but somebody can use too much information about you to be malicious. So uh, record in a space that you can't uh, be truly identified. So you see, how, you see how Jen's background, you can't really tell like she's in the room, but there's this pic, like, posters and uh, artwork behind her. That's also a good way because they can't have an identifying building or a object that can be GPS. So be mindful of that. So helpful, Dominic. Thank you very much for that. Um, if you're interested in different safety settings that you can set on YouTube, they're on the resource page. Um, as well. And oops, whoa, we have one more about comments and dealing with trolls. Um, and again, and more information is on the resource page. And I just wanted to quickly say before I hand it totally over to you, Dominic, is that there's a restricted mode and you can turn this on and it'll hide all the comments. Like people can really write some horrible comments on YouTube and it's not your job to have to police them. So you can just turn off the comments and then you don't have to see them at all. All right, go ahead, Dominic, thank you. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, me and Jen had a conversation the other day and the way I feel about trolls is exactly the way Jen feels about them. But I also feel as a content creator, if you at least don't get one troll, 
you, you, you know, you haven't made it yet. Because that means your content has reached somebody that felt so strongly to say something. That's just my perspective on it. But trolls are out there, comments dealing with social anxieties and certain traumas. It can trigger stuff in all of us. Um, because they're critiquing your work. And as an artist and as a creator, it, it can be harmful to the to negative critique, you know? And so um, definitely turning off comments if you feel like the topic is too hot of a topic, too, uh, too controversial of a topic, or too personal of a topic. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but also, you're, if you have a strong enough community, they'll take care of the troll. You just have to make sure it doesn't get out of control. Um, cause you know, people are going to be passionate about what you create. And I think the biggest thing about comments is please comment to your positives in your community. And if it's not, uh, uh, you don't feel like it's a troll that's, um, being malicious, but uneducated, um, put them, give them a second to have a conversation, educate an educational conversation, engage them. But once it seems like it's going to a point of you're not getting anywhere and it's being malicious and harmful to your um, mental well-being and spiritual well-being, uh, please stop commenting and, you know, block or report um, malicious um, YouTube users. Yeah. Um, thank you. It looks like we are at the end. Um, our last page just gives Dominic and my email addresses. But just before we kind of close, does anybody have any last thoughts or questions they want to type in the chat? We do have some ongoing conversation in the chat. Again, many people have listed YouTube channels that they either recommend or that are theirs. And so we'll find a way to include that uh, in the information that people can access later. Uh, a couple of people had to leave early and they're just wanting to say thank you. It was great information. Um, thank you. Good. And look at everybody's building community inside the comments like I was talking about earlier. This works fine. But I'm scrolling through all of them. While Mary does that, I would just like to take this opportunity to say thank you so much to Dominic and Jen. This was some really, really good information. Um, we are really hoping that people with disabilities will be able to start using social media more effectively to make their voices heard and you know step out there into the world. And um, last month's presentation on using Facebook also gave a wealth of knowledge and a lot of information that I didn't know, but I'm a very novice social media user. Next month, um, part three of our social media series is focusing on Instagram. So we felt like it was really important to cover the non-text-based social media platforms for people that don't necessarily have the dexterity, um, people aren't, aren't able to, to type well or, you know, use a keyboard. And so um, YouTube is a really good way to get that out there and also Instagram. And so part three of our social media series in November is going to be on using Instagram to uh, stay connected and make your voice heard. So again, many thanks to Jen, many thanks to Dominic. We really appreciate you um, taking this time and thank you to all of our viewers today. And we've got your um, YouTube channels and we hope to see you there.